Hey, MCE crew, looks like at least one senator has balls enough to try and prevent the American people, you and I, from being subject to, quote, vengeful taxation. Why do we focus on taxation so much? Because with every dollar you have to pay in taxes, that means that's a dollar that you don't get to invest toward your financial independence. So we're going to talk about this senator, what he says and we're going to look at the prospects of maybe this deal possibly, uh, you know, being drastically reduced or eliminated. Hopefully, we'll see. But in the meantime, before we get to that, go ahead, like, subscribe, help me out with the algorithm. I also want to say a couple of things. I don't get to see all of your comments. Now, I, I see them in email, but if I don't respond to your comment, because I make it a point to uh, acknowledge all of the comments. If I don't do that, understand that for whatever reason, YouTube put it in my email, but it didn't send it to the comments section where I can actually interact with it. I value the comments. I value the back and forth that's going on on some of these videos. Keep it coming, guys. But just understand that for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't, doesn't put all of them in the comments section for some weird reason. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I want to make you aware of. We're going to be focusing, because you know that I believe that things are changing so rapidly. We're going through what's called a sea change in finance, in this world, global finance. No longer do you have the luxury of just putting your money over in a 401k, setting it and forgetting it. You've got to be an active participant if you're going to achieve financial independence. To that end, we are starting to put together some content that's going to help you understand. It's going to dive very deeply into some of these concepts. And we're pulling this content from different places and uh, making it available to you. Some of it, I'm not going to lie. You're going to have to commit some time to. Uh, you're going to have to maybe take notes on. Please do it. Because again, you're going to come out of the other side of that much more enlightened in terms of where we're headed. Uh, and also, you're going to have a better understanding of where we've been in terms of the history. So look out for some of that long-form stuff is coming your way. All right, let's get into Senator Manchin slams Democrat spending plan as, quote, definition of fiscal insanity, unquote, will not re-engineer social fabric with vengeful, vengeful taxation. Joe Manchin's a Democrat, by the way, in West Virginia. Moderate Democrat Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia has issued a statement over his refusal to back his party's $3.5 trillion spending plan, calling trillions more of new and expanded government programs the definition of fiscal insanity when we can't even pay for the essential social programs like Social Security. Ah... Every member of Congress has a solemn duty. This is what he's saying. This is a quote. Every member of Congress has a solemn duty to vote for what they believe is best for the country and the American people, not their party. Respectfully, as I have said for months, I can't support $3.5 trillion more in spending when we have already spent $5.4 trillion since March of 2020. At some point, all of us, regardless of party, must ask the simple question, how much is enough? Bravo. An adult finally has stood up and said, no more. Enough is enough. Because remember, all of this money they're talking about spending, that's coming out of your pocket. Please do not believe the hype. Oh, we're only going to tax the rich. They can't get enough money from the rich. They're going to tax the middle class into, as I said before, oblivion. So Manchin is saying, no, I'm not with it. And as a senator, his vote means a lot, especially the way the Senate is currently constituted. I'm thinking some other Democrats are going to be coming along with him. There's talk that Christian, Kristen Sinema, she is from New Mexico, I believe. No, it's Arizona. I'm sorry. She also has consternation about this. <clears throat> what I have made clear to the president and Democrat uh, leaders is that spending trillions more on new and expanded government programs when we can't even pay for the essential programs is a definition of insanity, suggesting that spending trillions more 
will not have an impact on inflation ignores the everyday reality that America's families continue to pay an unaffordable inflation tax. That's right. If these guys, and they, they, they're saying it, they're saying, oh, you, we can spend money, don't worry about it. It's not going to cause inflation. In the midst of us living through inflation. It's bizarre. But again, these policymakers are adept at lying and they don't feel these things like we do. I go to a grocery store for my family, okay? Um, and I see the prices, okay? It's real. I don't sit down in the White House every evening to a dinner that's paid for by the taxpayers, okay? Since the beginning of this reconciliation debate, I, this is Joe Manchin, have been consistent in my belief that any expansion of social programs must be targeted to those in need, not expanded beyond what is fiscally possible. Our tax code should be reformed to fix the flaws of the 2017 tax bill and ensure everyone pays their fair share, but it should not weaken our global competi competitiveness or the ability of millions of small businesses to compete with the Amazons of the world. Overall, the amount we spend must be balanced with what we need and can afford, not designed to re-engineer the social and, e and economic fabric. So he is just being honest. You know, these people, some of them feel like there's a printing press. Let's just print all the money we need. And when it comes time to pay the tab, we will turn to the American middle class, take money out of their pockets and leave them with less to put to work for themselves and their families, thereby feeding into the narrative and the agenda uh, that they want to make people more dependent. OK, they don't want you to be independent and you need to recognize that and fight that. He wraps it up in a very meaningful, poignant and powerful way. And this is kind of echoes what, you know, we've been talking about here for quite some time. If there is one final lesson that will continue to guide me in this difficult debate ahead, it is this. America is a great nation, but great nations throughout history have been weakened by careless spending and bad policies. Now more than ever, we must work together to avoid these fatal mistakes so that we may fulfill our greatness. So, you know, he's got it. Now, I don't know what he's saying is accurate. What he's saying is accurate. Uh, is he playing politics? I don't know. West Virginia, politically speaking, you know, if he wants to appeal to his constituency, they're comfortable having a Democrat, but they tend to lean conservative. And they understand that all this money that's been floating around this $5.4 trillion that we spent since uh, 20, March of 2020, they know that money's not free. Okay, those stimulus checks, this is what the stimulus check was. It was the government taking money out of your right pocket and putting it into your left pocket uh, because you're going to pay for that. Okay, uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So he is... Uh, giving them some some hell on this, as he should, because this is our money. And again, we've got to concentrate our money on purchasing assets, not purchasing all this feel-good leftist crap that these Democrats want to, uh, want to engage in. And look, I'm not going to reserve it just for them. We also need to take a careful look at our defense budget as well, because you know the the right, the Republicans are really uh, hawks in a lot of uh, ways in terms of defense spending. Well, we need to take a look at that because we spend like more than 10 times more than all of the other top nations combined when it comes to defense. OK, maybe we need to take a look at these far flung bases. Why are we still in Germany? OK, the World War Two ended, what, 70 odd years ago. Why are we still there? Japan, maybe they can, you know, pick up some of the slack for themselves. At one point, Japan had an incredible Navy. So 
with the Democrats and what they want to do with social engineering, spending trillions to do that, and with the Republicans, what they want to do uh, in terms of you know, defense spending, all of that needs to be looked at because that's our money. Uh, it's not theirs. The government has no money. It's very important for you to remember that. Government has no money. Taxpayers. That's where the money comes from. And I'm not saying that the, we shouldn't be paying any taxes. We pay taxes and we get I-95, I-70, and that enables commerce. But all this stuff they want to do is just beyond the pale. I'm glad Manchin stood up. Guys, I'll talk to you soon.